Are you wanting to get into 3D printing but don't, don't understand the material and stuff that we use to do 3D printing? Um, well, join me today as I kind of explain some of the basics of filament. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's video, as I said, we're going to talk about filament. So, disclaimer right up front, we're going to be talking about FDM printing basically in the beginning. And this is going to be more of a beginner's video. So we're only going to limit this video to three types of material. We're going to talk about PLA, ABS, and PETG in this video. So some of the basic material that you can get started with if you purchase, say, an Ender 3 or something along that line from Creality or another type of printer that uses filament. So basically what we're gonna talk about is, what should I start with? What am I printing? For one, that's an important topic because depending on what you're printing is, depends on what material you wanna choose. So this is gonna be a very basic, very high level overview of just some of the materials that you can choose right off the bat if you're going with a basic FDM printer. So some disclaimers, like I said, we're gonna only talk about three. So there are more, but some of them may not be right for your printer. So that's kind of one of the things why I'm limiting it to those three to start with this video. Will I talk about more? Yeah, but that's for another video. So we're gonna jump in and we're gonna talk about PLA, ABS, then PETG. So let's jump into the PLA. Okay, so let's talk about PLA. <clears throat> PLA filament, oh, I just threw something on the floor, but PLA filament, I'll be honest, this is what I print with most of the time. I enjoy printing it, but I'm printing models or ships or figures or helmets. I'm doing a lot of stuff along that line. So PLA suits what I'm after. Um, it's got a lot of pros um, compared to PEG and ABS. You can do a higher printer speed. Temperatures are not as high to print this stuff. So it's kind of one of those things. This is good for everyday use stuff, not for use with food materials. So keep that in mind. You want to choose something like PETG or ABS that's more suited for that because when this prints, it is very porous. So a lot of places for food to get stuck in and not get cleaned out. And you can't put this stuff in the dishwasher. But there's a lot of types of, P of brands of PLA that you can choose. As you can see, the one in my hand is 3D. Uh, 3D uh, Solution Tech printer filament. So I'm just gonna talk about a few that I have experiment uh, that I've worked with. Um, 3D Solution Tech, it's a decent filament. Esun, their PLA Plus is a good one. Duramac, this is my second best. This is one of the ones I like working with. Um, the temperatures, you have to run a little hotter than most, but their PLA, it comes out looking gorgeous. Um, it does a really good job. My personal favorite, Inland. Inland PLA Plus is my personal favorite. This is what I use to print most of my stuff that you've seen on this channel. Um, it comes out clean, it come, has a nice shine to it, um, and I get really good detail with the PLA Plus. This is a roll of natural. Um, it does a good job, but there's some cons to it. Okay, let's talk about the cons of PLA. So PLA, like I said, it's one of my go-to materials, but it does have some cons. It can be very porous. Um, if the walls are very thin, like if you want to try to put water or something in it, it can easily leak. There's no good way to really seal it except doing multiple layers or trying to do an acetone wash, which another video for that coming up. That's better with ABS for acetone washing, but also it's kind of one of those things. But you can get it there, but you just got to watch your thickness and layer upon layer to ensure that. Um, Food particles. If you try to use this stuff with food, like a cookie, cookie cutter and stuff, material does get stuck in it. It's very hard to clean out and it can't go in the dishwasher because it'll just melt. So the other bad thing about PLA is it's not as strong. ABS is a really strong material when it's printed for plastic. ABS can be more flimsy, more light, depending on how you print with infill and different layers and different things like that. So always something to keep in mind. If you need something really strong, PLA may not be your friend here. It's also not as flexible, so you know it's one of those things that can break. The other thing is about PLA is it is very heat sensitive. So you will see shrinking, peeling, warping is very more common with this material than what you think it will be. So it's kind of one of those things, make sure when you're looking at the spools, look at the temperature that you're printing with. 
So one thing to say, like Inland has PLA and Inland has PLA Plus. There are different temperatures on the box for those, and there's different printing temperatures. So if you switch out and put Inland PLA Plus, but you've got the PLA setting that's at a higher temp, you, you might get a bad print. You might get a great print, but you might get a bad print and get clung get clumps, get clogs, get stringing, and different problems that you want to avoid. So it's always important to look at this temperatures of these fil filaments to get them printing correctly. So those are just a few things that can happen with it. Those are a few of the cons. Like I said, high level overview, overview. but let's move on to ABS. All right, so let's talk about ABS. So I've only used ABS from two vendors, so not as plentiful vendors as the PLA, but Inland, I love them. They work great. Their stuff works really well. And 3D Solution Tech, their ABS has been really good as well. So some things to know about this stuff. Pro, very sturdy, very hard material. Very good if you're wanting machine or car parts. This is your stuff. This is where you want to go. So it can be very hard, um, works very well. Um, you do have to make sure that when you're looking at these labels of what you're going to print, you need to note those printing temperatures. ABS prints at a higher temperature. you got to print it at a higher temperature to get it to work right. So that's kind of one thing to keep in mind. Now, most Creality printers, and maybe most vendors as well, come with a standard PLA and ABS mode that makes that work. Now, one of the things you got to keep in mind is every vendor's heat is different. So make sure when you're slicing your model, you're selecting the right heat for the right filament that you're using. But let's move on to the cons of ABS. All right, so let's talk the cons of ABS filament. So ABS, it's great. It prints hard, which is really the true good attribute about this stuff that you can use it for. If you're making parts for something, this is the way to go but it can be more difficult to print with. Um, higher print temps, temps, better at heat, getting good adhesion. One con is this has to be on a heated bed. Now, granted, Ender 3s and stuff like that, they come with the heated bed, so really not a problem, but make sure your bed is up to the right temperature. This guy needs a hotter bed than what PLA would print on, um, just to keep good adherence and keep it from warping and doing stuff you don't want it to do. Also, ABS, it does tend to have a bad fume. So make sure you're printing in a well-ventilated area, but this does kind of have a stench to it. Um, so if you've got an enclosure for your printer, awesome, you're probably gonna be fine. But if you're just printing out willy-nilly in your office, probably not the stuff you wanna use. And a correction from earlier. I said ABS for using for food. No, don't use this stuff for food. It is not food safe, okay? So really the only thing that is food safe probably is PETG for making like cookie cutters and stuff like that just as you can go but don't use this stuff with food because it is made with oil so that is a lot where your fume comes from too but pros and cons ABS is a good material to have I've only worked with two brands again I like the Inland brand it has done well for me now that doesn't mean it's gonna it's not gonna be what you love like I said I like I use four different brands of PLA depending on what I'm doing. So find the brand that fits you. Inland, it's a good one. But <clears throat> let's move on to the third and final material we're going to talk about today, PETG. So PETG, it's a good material. I like it a lot. It has a lot of good attributes that are kind of torn between the two. It's a very strong material but it's flexible material. It has a lot of, it can have give to it, which is pretty cool. Um, it prints very smooth, which is always a good attribute, especially if you're doing models, cosplay, stuff like that. It sands really well, which is really important if you're doing, making things that you're gonna have to have a very smooth surface and you need to sand out and clean up. This guy's good to do that with. It, all in all, one of the best things about this material is it doesn't have a tendency to shrink. So you don't see the warping and stuff that pulling itself to up and together that you would see with PLA and ABS. It actually stays a very good material and it can be very useful when you're printing. A lot of people that I see on YouTube and different things like that, this is all they go for anymore is the PETG. Now this is a transparent roll. That's why it has this gloss and kind of see-through. Um, Cause as you guys know, 
I print toys, I print models, and I was trying to do something with one of my Star Trek ships in the warp cells, and I was trying to use the blue for it. Uh, as you can see, it's not on my printer right now, so I didn't have some success, but hey, we'll get back to that. But let's get to the cons. All right, the cons of PETG. So PETG can, one of the things and problems I see a lot of is PGEG, especially if you're printing with a glass bed, can stick to that bed. Remember that part where I said it was a pro about the shrinkage and stuff? Well, it has really good adherence and it can be very sticky and it can have a lot of stringing problems because of the material type. So that's just one of the things. Another con to it is, again, you're going for that higher print temperature and higher bed temperature to keep it printing well. Um, it's just kind of one of those things you've got to make sure when you get a roll of PLA, ABS or PEG, there's a label telling you your temps. Make sure when you are slicing that you are at the right temps. Now, like this one has a range of 230 to 250. With MicroReality printers, I've learned. So let's see, we got a 20 degree range. I'm going to stay in that higher five of the range. So if this, with this being 230 to 250, I would probably print at 245 just to be kind of in the good range, but I've also learned I got to heat mine up a little bit hotter to get it to work right. That may not be true on your printer. Every printer is different. I don't care if you have five Ender 3s, all of them may behave a little bit different. And it's always something to remember. And remember your bed types and different things like this. A magnetic bed may pull off easier from this than a glass bed will. Now, one tip that I've learned with this in a glass bed, if it's stuck, put your bed in the freezer for five minutes. And a lot of times it'll pop right off. So PETG has a lot of advantage. It's got flexibility, strength. It's kind of an all in the middle, really good maker material. But like I said, I use all three. So we're gonna cut to the conclusion of all three of these materials. So for conclusion with these materials, I can't really tell you which one you need to use. I can only tell you what you can use. And a straight out of the box, Ender 3 or basic reality printer, those are gonna be the three best ones probably for you, in my opinion, keyword, my opinion. Now, there's other materials out there. There's carbon fiber, there's nylon, there's TPU. There's all kinds of stuff out there, but may not be right for your printer. Or you may have to make major adjustments like a direct drive extruder or something like that to get those materials to work properly for you. So always keep that in mind. What I'm talking about is if you're just getting started and you wanna get going, these three are the main three that I recommend that you start with. Like I said, my usual go-to is PLA. No fumes, it's pretty strong, and I'm printing things that are not going in machines or I need a lot of flexibility to. Take your material, think about what you're doing. If you're building something that needs flexibility or you need it to be easy to clean up, PEDG may be your bet. If you're a car guy and you bought this to help make parts for the interior car or something like that, ABS is gonna be best for you. It just depends on what you're doing with the material. And this, like I said, was just a high over level overview. And I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw today, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, join the channel for more info as we get started moving forward with getting all you guys 3D printing and started 3D printing in a way that fits you and keep you guys printing. That's the key point of what I'm trying to teach in these videos is I want you to stay printing. I see a lot of people get discouraged. Print, keep going, keep trying. There is an art to this and there is a lot of stuff that you have to do with bed leveling and everything else, but keep going. And if you've got a question or a problem with your printer that you're not sure of, comments, leave one down there and I'll be glad to try to help you out. We'll see you guys in the next video.